<laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, and and now and nowadays in the language of therapy stuff, it's just you know fear, false evidence appearing real. Mm-hmm. Make a lot of stuff up. Boy, and this is Earth. I think what it is is that the human species has come through a grueling process of forming a civilization even as primitive as the one in which we exist and all of the setbacks insults traumas of that passage are carried from generation to generation as subliminal memory which show up as uh, false I say expectations appearing real Mm-hmm. And so people are loaded. This civilization is just full of it. And what's needed very soon is a massive purging of all the garbage of inherited nonsense from all the previous ancestral generations. Because that's what makes up conservatives, by the way, is all of the crap that they've inherited that they haven't undertaken to clean up. Thing. And it make and it makes them conservative because these are the things they have to fix. No, well that's true. It makes them conservative because all of the insults and trauma in their memory patterns are the filters through which they perceive experience now. They expect everything now unconsciously. They expect it to be a recapitulation of the past. And it's supported by the arrogance of presumed knowing. They think they know what they're talking about, but they don't. They are operating on the basis of the sins of the fathers that have been passed on to the fourth generation. That's what they're thinking the world is. And so they treat everything in the world as if it's a repetition of all the crap that their line of family has experienced in the past. But it's all unconscious. It's all Rather than sensory motor amnesia, which is Tom Hanna's coin for the movement liabilities, it's what I call attentional intentional amnesia. It's all the memory that it, of which they are amnesic, but which is still running the show from behind the scenes. Right. And they think that the world deserves their unregenerate antagonism but it's themselves that they are assuming the world is like. They think the world is like their own unconscious material. This is known as projection. Not a great term, by the way, but that's the term that's in use. What it is 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 misattributing one's own condition to others. (laughs) Much much longer phrase. (laughs) Yeah, but clearer, isn't it, than the word projection? I guess you threw me when you said conservatives, and so, uh, and so, what I was, what I went with it is, to me, conservatives. It's all about they seem to be so afraid of everything that they want to control everything. Not that, mm-hmm. not that it makes sense how they're going about it. Mm-hmm but they're controlling everything. Am I misunderstanding how you're using the term? No, that's a precise understanding of it. The and reason they feel they need to control it is because to their memory, remember we said earlier that things have for their meaning the memories that are like the things that we're looking at or that we want to make understandable by likening to them what we already know, likening them to what we already know. So they are looking at the world through mud-colored glasses all of the inheritance of their family lineage and attitudes and beliefs and ways of operating that they have uh, taken on unconsciously as just the inheritance of a family conditioning and cultural conditioning and which for the sake of their own sense of empowerment they are now asserting as the truth so that they have some leverage for acting on the world. 
And this is why they are, what they're conserving is the crap of the past. All the memory crap, which makes the world appear to be a hostile, dangerous place, which becomes a hostile, dangerous place, because if people are acting on the basis of these memories, they become dangerous themselves, and then the world people react to that stuff in a self-perpetuating feedback loop. So it is a study in nincompoopery. <laughs> See, uh, which again, it gets back to what humanity needs is a wholesale purging of all of this crap and of the attitude that makes it seem like they have to assert that crap as true in order to have power in the world and be safe. See, it's a psychosis or maybe it's just a neurosis, but I think it's a psychosis. It's a break. It's a discontinuity that they are dragging from generation to generation. So I wrote about that in other starker language in the piece I wrote about the anatomy of culturally entrenched cruelty, that article. That just made it plain in your face explicit. I think it frightens some people to read that thing. <laughs> it's not a walk in the park. No, I I, I remember the piece. It, um, I've since I've since um, oh, it's I guess it's further back in my memory. I remember the piece. Mm -hmm. I don't remember specifically what you're talking about. I remember I remember when I first read it. I I knew I knew eventually it was going to wrap up to a good thing, mm -hmm. <laughs> but I did feel like halfway through it was like. I can no longer hold my feet to this fire. I need to set this down and come back to it later. Exactly. Not that it scared me. <laughs> well, it's just intense, isn't it? It was like... It was very intense. No holds barred. It was very intense. And, and I've experienced some of those things, and I've learned some things. And, and Yes, and then when I got all done, I, well, you and I had talked about it. It was like, if, in, if it was that intense for me to experience by reading it, it must have been really intense to write it. Yeah, well, even more so to have lived it. So this cycles back to an earlier topic in this conversation. How did I write that thing? How did you write that thing? I did a setup procedure, which is the variant of the crystal crown focused to a single item. Mm -hmm on cruelty and it revealed the whole scope and shape of the thing that became that piece as a set of intuitions which then found substantiation in actual history so as much as that in, in the way I'm interpreting what you're saying, because I, you know, I'm trying to, when I, when I ask you these questions and, and, and bring up some of these foolish things that you say, well, that's not important. I'm, I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to apply some of this knowledge and understand to my own life. Mm -hmm. And so as I'm listening to you, as you're, as you're landscaping out the process of for me, I'm thinking, so as much as, I thought it would be the difficulty would be the writing the words of the article, but it sounds like the true work was the awareness before the article even as part of the development of the article. That's right. Wow. See, but when you run a setup procedure on anything or a crystal crown procedure, two things happen. One is a series of internal shifts which you experience today in Act 1 of the Crystal Crown Procedure which enhance balance or e emotional balance, equipoise, equanimity. And the second thing is along with that it reveals the form, hidden nature and unconscious information about those things. So it gives you better balance and then puts a whole pile of stuff on your plate <laughs> and says, eat this. <laughs> <laughs> But it is. That's it. So it, it makes it, it, the ordeal is driving through from beginning to the end of what is a long procedure. The set of procedures, the longest of all the procedures. It's also 
the most powerful and most useful for surfacing up all the unconscious memory material and in effect neutralizing it. The setup procedure is? Setup procedure, yeah, of which the crystal crown is the structure, the underlying structure. As the setup has driving in the four pegs, the three rings, and the cross pieces. Okay. Same structure, but now we fit an item by name into each of the steps or where it's appropriate. There's oversimplified way of saying it, but that's how it's done. Yes. And so it reveals whatever you put your attention on. There's a term out of the Indian teachings, there's a, a yogic language, the term is Samyama, Samyama, S-A-M-Y-A-M-A, -A -A. and it's defined as the penetrating of anything to its heart or essential essence. It's a contemplatory action, Samyama is, and you are penetrating to the heart of something to discern its essential nature. And these procedures are forms of samyama. They're just kind of a new form. <laughs> but they are seemingly reduced to their structural essence. If you were to do samyama on samyama, you would discover that it requires your attention. It requires your intention to drive to the heart of the matter. It requires openness to the revelation and capturing it, which is memory. See, so Samyama itself is the structure of the Tetra Seed, or vice versa. But now we have handles. Instead of just putting your attention on an item and you know, waiting for insight to emerge, now we have some good handles and some valves, a couple of levers, a screw. <laughs> what, are you, what are you trying to pipe this thing up or what? Pipe this Do machine up? Do what? What do you try to do? Pipe this machine up? Pipe it up. I don't follow that one. But well, that, oh, I see. That's out of your work history. The steam fitter stuff, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Refrigeration fitter stuff, yeah. Yeah, that's right. What we're doing this is the brief story that Mark Twain told about a man who had a toothache, and he went to a certain dentist at a certain town in Missouri. And the man took a look he said that tooth is going to have to come out but i can't do it now we have to schedule another appointment so a guy comes a week later comes through the appointment and the dentist attempts to remove the tooth and he pulls and he pulls and the, and the tooth just will not come he said come back in two weeks the guy comes back in two weeks and the dentist has created a device that incorporated all the principles of the wheel the lever the <laughs> screw Oh, the no. wedge and the incline plane. Oh no. And he put the guy into the device and pulled on the tooth and the man's whole skeleton was extracted. <laughs> he had to send the guy home in a pillowcase. Oh. <laughs> so much for piping it up. Problem solved. Yeah, really. Creating a new problem. Oh, at least for the guy in the pillowcase. Oh. Yeah. Well, but you can take consolation from the idea that he had it soft for the rest of his life. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I'm not getting, I'm not coming to the same conclusion. Oh, all right. Anyway, that was Act One. <clears throat> and I think that'll, your face is making an interesting shape. What's, what's cooking there? I'm just, I'm waiting for my pause. For your part. Oh, well, I was just thinking, given our time right now, that's probably a good place to stop here. And you can pick up with the other acts, which are much briefer. Okay. Sorry, something just kept popped up on the screen. There's nothing important. Okay. All um, right.